This all comes down to making your project settings a certain resolution. I'm using Final Cut Pro, but this also applies to Adobe Premiere and other softwares. I do think Resolve is different. This isn't the right way, but if you really wanted to edit your footage on a standard 4K timeline, so 3840 by 2160, and if your lens is a 1.3 times squeeze, you would adjust your vertical scale to 76.9%. If your lens is a 1.6 times squeeze, you'd adjust the vertical scale to 62.5%. But once again, this isn't the right way to do it, technically. You'll get these cinematic black bars on top and bottom, but you're also reducing the quality of your shot and you're not de-squeezing the footage the right way. I'll explain why towards the end of the video, but this is the right way. For a 1.3 times squeeze, we need to stretch the horizontal width to get the right look. Here is how you calculate it. Take the 3840 pixels that we get from 4K footage and multiply it by 1.3, if you shot with a 1.3 anamorphic lens. I'll explain a 1.6 times squeeze in a second, but basically, you multiply 3840 by whatever squeeze amount your lens provides, if you're shooting in 4K. So for a 1.3 times squeeze, this gives us 4,992 pixels. So your new project dimensions should be 4,992 by 2160. We keep the vertical resolution the same no matter how many times squeeze your lens is. Then you head to your x-axis and increase by 130%. 130% because it is a 1.3 times squeeze. For a 1.6 times squeeze, take the 3840 pixels from 4K and multiply by 1.6. This gives us 6,144 pixels, so your project dimensions should be 6144 by 2160. Then head to your x-axis and increase by, you guessed it, 160% because it is a 1.6 times squeeze. And by the way, if you have multiple clips, you can just make your life easier by throwing an adjustment layer over top, so when you stretch it out, it affects all your clips underneath. Now some of you may be saying, wait, why would we make our project resolution greater than what our camera's sensors are recording in? If we're shooting in 4K, our shot's resolution is 3840 by 2160, so shouldn't we make the project width 3840 so it stays full quality, and then just decrease the vertical resolution to 1662 for 1.3 times anamorphic lenses, or 1350 for 1.6 times, and then stretch the x-axis after the fact. I did a ton of research and consulted with a few really smart people, and here's what I found. When you shoot with an anamorphic lens, you are still working with a fixed number of pixels. This is true, it doesn't automatically make your sensor capture more pixels. However, and here's where it gets tricky, de-squeezing the footage does actually increase the pixel count, but these extra pixels are digitally generated through the process of interpolation. So you're not actually gaining true resolution. It is similar to upscaling a normal image. On the flip side, downscaling by making your vertical resolution less than what your camera shot in reduces image quality even more than upscaling, surprisingly. So by upscaling our width, this isn't really an issue. Most people don't notice any minor loss in quality because the unique look of anamorphic footage and human perception hides any potential flaws. And here's a little fun tidbit, the human eye is generally more sensitive to vertical resolution loss than horizontal stretching because of the way that we perceive detail. So although it seems counterintuitive, leaving your vertical resolution 4K, so that'd be 2160, and expanding the horizontal resolution to decompress the squished anamorphic image is actually the right call. That may be more than you wanted to know, but not enough people explain why we should do something, so I thought I would. If this helped you out, it would mean a lot if you would let me know that it did in the comments and hit that like button. And if you're wanting to learn more about videography and editing, consider subscribing. Have a great rest of your day, guys.